Venusaur hasn't been used much in the recent gen of VGC since it came out through the DLC, but it does still have Chlorophyll. Weather Ball is a really fun tool that it got in Generation 8, and it's still a pretty powerful option. We're going to be trying out this team that got second place in the tournament and seeing how well it can perform. This Venusaur and Walking Wake team did extremely well getting second place in a tournament. Overall, the, we have the Torkoal Venusaur, the classic, which is able to threaten quite a bit with that Weather Ball and the Sun with Terra Fire as a defensive option against fire types, but also the Power Weather Ball it is really nice. Being able to resist Flutter Mane and the threaten Terra Fairy as an option because Sludge Bomb will then one shot the Flutter Mane if so. We have as well to support that Torkoal and Venusaur, we have the Rigoraf with the Armor Tail that's able to provide Trick Room support for that Torkoal and prevent any priority moves. We have the Choice Specs Walking Wake with Speed Booster and Terra Steel Terra Blast of multiple options to cover for that Flutter Main option, but also really strong hits, especially that Hydro Steam boosted in the sun, able to hit Incineroar, which Venusaur does not really like. We also have for support a Focus Sash Taunt Flutter Main which is able to get advantage of the special attack booster from the sun, do a lot of damage, taunt to prevent any shenanigans. And then finally, to round out the team, Iron Hands, which is a good pair with the Tricker Mode with the Ferrograph and Torkoal. If you'd like to check out the details of the team and the creator, they'll be linked in the description down below. Our Trick Room, Entity King, Gambit, the Galade, Hattering, Torkoal, and, oh well, or the, <laughs> the um, Cornerstone Ogre Pond. I do have the, I don't have the imprisoned. I do have a way to reverse Trick Room. I do have Taunt Flutter Main, which actually is kind of useless because their Trick Room setter is the Hattering. I kind of don't mind just going straight for the damage of Walking Wake, but I'm not 100% certain if I do want to go for that. Hmm. I could go Walking Wake lead. I'm a bit worried about the size spam combination. Mm. I kind of like just doing damage realistically. I don't think Flutter Main. Flutter Main's okay, but it's not like super useful. I think King Gambit has some use, or um, Iron has some has some usage. I think I'm bringing Walking Wake. I mean, Walking Wake Venusaur isn't too bad. And maybe like, actually, let's not bring the Walking Wake. Let's bring the Torkoal and let's bring the Venusaur. Because if they set up Trick Room, I think my Torkoal sweeps. But of course, it's like, okay, we might have to play a Torkoal uh, speed tie, which means they might be inclined not to actually Trick Room, which means that I can maybe try to outpower them while they're trying to get damage instead. And bring Venusaur kind of baits them to like go for expanding force, for instance, which could be big. The laid plus the cornerstone ogre pawn is an interesting lead. I'm gonna go for a hydro steam immediately, and I'm gonna switch out into my Ferrigoraph. It should be follow me, Trick Room. I could try to get my own Torkoal in. I just never want them to get a free switch to Torkoal. Unless they hard switch to Cornstone Ogre Pound, which that's a very aggressive risky play turn one. And that could lead me to doubling the Glade and you just lose. I don't think they'd ever do that. Um, we are going to see Follow Me. They're probably expecting one to deny the Sleep Powder, but B also to just like maybe get that free switch to Torkoal. If I double tax, I'm not falling for that. I just steam into the Ogre Pond. And Trick Room comes out. Okay. I should be slower than Cornerstone Ogre Pond unless it's Cornerstone Ogre. I don't know if they run max speed on this. I actually don't remember what they run on the hard trick room. I know they run it, but like, I think this is probably a Hydro Steam in the reverse trick room mode. I could also just Psychic if I want to. I think I'm going to reverse trick room and Hydro Steam attempt. Let's see. Is they're going to go for Sacred Sword to get damage? All right, that's perfectly fine because I do have the Citrus Berry. And then the Hydro Steam will do a lot of damage to the Cornerstone Ogre Pond. Oh, it is slower. Okay. But with that Citrus Bay Ray, it was about to double up. Perfect. Okay. Hydro Steam will come out, knock out the Ogre Pond. Huge. And now we threaten Helping Hand Hydro Steam as well. I just don't want them to really get a free switch to Torkoal. Because I think 
as much as I can beat it because we have a 50-50 with the <laughs> with the speed tie potentially. I just don't want to get a eruption next to like a partner that can actually threaten walk and wake for the knockout. So that's the reason why. Let's see who's coming out. Hattering? No, oh, Indy. Okay. I'm going for the knockout into the glaze if they give it to me. So I'm going to go for the Hydra Steam. I'm going to go for Helping Hand. I think this is probably they're going to attempt a Trick Room with the Indity and take the knockout into my Forever Grab. That's my assumption here. Because uh, they might be scared of Imprison on the Forever Grab. I actually don't even know if I guarantee. The thing is that's also weird for them is if they do make that play, then I do have Torkoal that threatens really heavy pressure against them. We see a Terra coming out. What is the Terra here? Dragon? Indity. Fairy. Why did they tear a fairy in this spot? I'm confused. Helping hand gonna come out. Oh, are they going for a dazzling gleam trick room instead? Yeah, that's what they did instead. Okay, that makes sense. Get a big amount of damage to Glade. I didn't pick up the knockout. I thought I would. They go for Sacred Sword into the Ferrigraph. That's fine. And Trick Room. Okay. All right. Uh, time for a bit of a gamble. I do have pretty decent Terras that are still useful here, though. I go Torkoal. For the sun but i also specifically threatened the glade we're gonna have to play a bit of a game i think between are they gonna wide guard or not actually no this is probably a super safe play i think i just go for eruption and i heart swap here into venusaur yeah um that play does lose to torkoal it doesn't no that play doesn't guarantee lose i was thinking they switch out entity and click wide guard it loses to Hydro Steam to Indy D slot. But I think my best play is just to go Venusaur and click Eruption. Because this is usually Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Indy D. And if they don't wide guard with the Glade, they just like lose the Glade. Which means uh, they're in a really awful spot. Let's bring out the Venusaur. Let's see what comes out. Wide guard Dazzling Gleam is my expectation. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they were like, okay, they want to keep the wide guard around so their Torkoal is protected by the eruption heat wave option, so I'd be forced to earth power in that mind game. So I kind of see the vision. It's just not going to work here. And the and I felt Venusaur was safe because it's just a sludge bomb into the... Um, I can just sludge bomb a slot. So I'm going to sludge bomb and I'm going to heat eruption. And they're still out their own trick room turn, so I think we should be good here. They already committed their Terra too. I also still have my Terra, which is the Venusaur. So they're kind of stuck because this eruption is just threatening so much damage. And this is kind of a weird thing about the Sun Mirror for them. They're going to switch out the Indy into their Torkoal, but now they can't eruption sweep me because I went for the Sludge Bomb into that slot. Maybe they're hoping that I target the Glade, but like I know the Glade's pain to either wide guarding or not. So this is just a free Sludge Bomb in the Torkoal. Huge amount of damage here. Okay. And that means they can't knock out my Torkoal unless they go for the Earth Power, which I guess is a thing. So let's see. We will go for a sludge bomb into the Torkoal. Really good damage. No poison. Oh, so that's acceptable. Mm. I am in speed. So I can risk it if I really, really want to. Because uh, the play here would probably be to just earth power to Gallade. I want to scout for what they're going to click. I don't see a problem with scouting here. There's no really bad reason to. I want to see what they're locking in. Is this going to be wide guard or is this going to be something else? Because the Glade attacking the Torkoal actually be able to knock out my Torkoal is a big question. They lock in the wide guard. Okay, so they're not going for Psycho Cut. If they have Psycho Cut, I don't know if they do. Heat Wave, yeah, that's fine. All right, I'm going to tear my Venusaur down. Tired of Venusaur should be super safe to win the game, guaranteed. So I'm going to target the Galate slot with Sludge Bomb into Earth Power. And I think the only way they would knock me out is if they have like Expert Belt or some ground boosting item 
and earth power they could crit me too i guess i should eruption actually because even if they wide guard it's fine i think i'm pretty i'm pretty sure yeah no i should be fine i think uh walking wake should win because it's just impossible for them to reposition so i'm bringing out the terrifier venusaur they're gonna lock in the wide guard, so I think I guarantee win. Unless they earth power read, I guess. Corruption. Could have earth powered, but uh, I I don't know. The thing is, Galate has decent special defense. <laughs> I'm worried earth power is not able to KO. But yeah, they lock in the heat wave. Actually does a lot, it's specs. Okay. Flesh bomb gonna knock out the Galade, but I am able to seal up the victory here. Perfect. Okay, and it's just NDD and Torkoal left. Trickum's over. I can sludge bomb the NDD slot, and uh, the Walking Wake just wins afterward. I click sludge bomb. I click Earth Power, and even if they somehow like what protect the NDD, a Heat Wave knock out both my Pokemon, I just get a free switch into my Walking Wake, and then Walking Wake just walls the Torkoal indefinitely. Actually, I didn't realize the NDD was full. I never did get damage into it. I guess in that case, I should sludge bomb the Torkoal slot and then heat wave. Regardless, I think uh, I should be fine regardless, no matter what. Yeah, because if they follow me, they're not trick rooming, right? Like, even if they get the double knockout here, then I just spam Hydro Steam in the NDD while the Torkoal can't do anything. The life of sludge bomb actually just knocks out the NDD, which... I'm a little bit surprised it did, but I'll definitely take it. <laughs> so Indy goes down. Uh, we're going to take a bit of recoil. Let's see who's Torkoal wins the speed type, probably. Unless they're just faster Torkoal. Here we're going to come out. Ooh, both Pokemon actually survived the Heat Wave, but my Heat Wave will connect. Land on the Torkoal. Good game. Okay. All right, Trick Room. A little bit of a strange maneuvering. I felt like I had a pretty good couple of turns. I kind of messed up in the Ogre Pond because I got the speed wrong. I felt like Ogre... I wasn't, I don't know if Ogre Ponds are in max speed or not, but like maybe like a fast taunt or something uh, to prevent like imprisons and stuff. So that was like my idea, but no, it wasn't too bad. I still was able to just survive the double up thanks to the Citrus Bay for Rigraph. I had a feeling I would if like it did come down it and it did. <laughs> Fluttermane, King Gambit, Reelaboom, Xi'an Pao, Gouting Fire, and Wellspring Ogre Pond. All right. Shade Pao is really scary. That Mon's a pretty threatening Mon. I do like the Walking Wake lead, I think. It's pretty effective. What else do I like? Walking Wake Iron Hands isn't too bad. I like the Torkoal Venusaur. Torkoal's pretty good against this team overall. I kind of like the Torkoal lead, I think. It's probably just powering up the Fluttermane. I don't really love that idea. Hmm. I think Iron Hands is in the bad lead with Walking Wake because Fake Out Pressure is always really good. I have Torkoal Venusaur in the back because it switches into Flutter. Like if I had to switch out Iron Hands or the Walking Wake, then sure. I also have the idea of switching into Torkoal afterward. I don't know what they're exactly going to lead here because I don't know if they're going to prepare for Trick Room with like King Gambit or not. Iron Hands is just a good lead into it. So let's see. Uh, we're going to see the lead of oh, Flutter Main Reel of them. Okay. Mm, not too bad. So I have the option to go for Terra with either of these Pokemon. <laughs> a fun thing would be to just go for the Terra Steel Terra Blast into the Fluttermane. Ah, uh, Fake Out's probably really likely though. Venusaur's not a bad play. Hmm. I think I like the idea of going for the Terra Blast and just switching out into Venusaur. This is probably Fake Out into Walking Wake and Dazzling Gleam. That's what I'm expecting. And I think that's completely fine. So let's see how this is going to go. Because I like the idea of Terra Steel, Terra Blast into Flare Main. If I do get it, it's a really nice combo. But I need Walking Wake around so I can pressure the Gouging Fire, which is a pretty important one. Looks like we're not going to see, like, a Terra Fairy for, like, a Dazzling Gleam turn one. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Walking Wake. 
Is it fake out? Oh, wait, what? Is it really Boom Terry? No, Fluttermane did Terra. They're just a slow Fluttermane. Wait, that's actually pretty huge. Okay. That's good for me. They faked out the Iron Hands too. <laughs> uh... Okay. <laughs> I did not think I was ever going to get that, but uh, sure. Sure. Get KO'd a slow Terra Fairy Fluttermane that Terra'd immediately, so that's a good start. That is a excellent start. So let's see what's coming out now. Is it going to be the Gouging Fire? It is going to be Gouging Fire. Yep. I don't know if they have Wellspring Ogre Palm, which is like the only scary mon, really. I think in the back. But they could target the Venusaur. I don't know if they are. Iron Hand seems super solid here. I could go Torkoal and Weather Ball too. Hmm. I could also just go Iron Hands and Protect. There really is not a punish to that. Except uh, I could be taking a higher horsepower, I suppose. And they also have the ability to build a momentum. I don't really like the idea of them building a momentum, especially because high horsepower real boom is also pretty likely. I'd rather just get the sun up, I think, and go for the weather ball into the real boom. Because weather ball is going to do a lot of damage with the... I think weather ball does more with the sun boost. If I'm not mistaken, because 90 with same type of attack bonus, and then weather ball is 100 after getting a weather power so oh wait no sludge bomb no but you get the sun boost after okay so able to get a lot of damage into the real boom yeah they went for how so this is the reason i decided to go for the immediate attack which i think was just better in this case go for the high horse power plus one yeah i didn't want to give them that much momentum that's why i made this play perfect i need damage into the gouging fire does grass like KO at this range? It's plus one. <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, that was plus one high horsepower, which did about... What was that? 140? So... Uh, it's grassy glide, grassy terrain. I think I survived grassy glide. Barely. I think I just weather ball. Because they don't have a switch into weather ball. And I earth power. Because if I put the Gouging Fire, if I get any chip on Gouging Fire, it just puts in range of uh, Hydro Steam. We're going to see the swap here, which is fine. Into Chien Pao. Okay, so it's not Wellspring Ogre Pond in the back, which actually helps out a lot. What about going to come out into the Chien Pao? Nice. Good damage into Chien Pao, which is always ideal. Okay, endgame can still be scary. Breaking Swipe comes out. They don't actually take the knockout into Venusaur, but they do have the Sucker Punch strat. Okay. Alright. I gotta be careful about the sequencing because they've actually put themselves into a decent position. I think I always go out into Walking Wake so I can threaten the Draco Meteor into the Gouging Fire. The thing is, I don't really like the idea of them getting a free swap. Because if they get a free swap in a Rillaboom and I lose Venusaur to a Sucker Punch, it gets really awkward. So I don't know if they're going to Sucker Punch or not. I revealed Weather Ball and Slut. I didn't reveal Sludge Bomb yet, so I guess they could think I have Sleep Powder and not Protect. I want a Draco Meteor and just go out into Iron Hands. Because I don't think... I know Walking Away is not exactly the bulkiest Pokemon, but I also don't think it's fair enough to go down to one Sacred Sword, even with the Super Effective. Let's see if I'm right. Bring out the Iron Hands. Okay, they clicked Sucker Punch, but I also get the Draco Meteor off into the Gouging Fire. Perfect. Okay, so I just win now. Ooh, all right. That is good. That is good. All right. So... So the gouging fire goes down. Pretty safe victory here, I think. 
Because I'm pretty sure that I should be able to win with just Iron Hands. Grassy Terrain is also expiring the next turn. Although there is only like one turn of uh, Harsh Sunlight after. I could Draco Meteor and Fake Out. I guess I could always just Draco Meteor and Fake Out the... Yeah, I could Draco Meteor the Real Boom and Fake Out the Xi'an Pal. So they Fake Out Iron Hands. I get the KO into the Real Boom. They go for Fake Out into the... Yeah, I think this is fine. Let's see. Yeah, they go for fake out so that was like their last ditch effort i do get the fake out off into the Xi'an pal pick up the knockout and that is going to be it game okay nice i like switching probably would have actually been bad because i was worried about like oh what if they high horsepower crit my iron hands and protect Xi'an pal i guess i could have faked out the rila but could have been awkward i think if like the Xi'an pal attacked so i wasn't sure if there's a hundred percent safe like switch play so just like attacking with both kind of uh, worked out and then i can just drain punch the real boom finished off here so nice nice was able to get quite a bit of heavy damage across the board and yep like i felt like i just had a really really amazing start so like the knockout into flutter maybe without taking too much damage then burning up the terra absolutely beautiful for walking awake and then uh venus i was able to clean up from there with uh iron hands support gouging fire plus the wellspring ogre pond flutter main reelaboom mouse hold and king gambit oh boy the population bomb mouse hold makes a comeback hmm That'd be a bit of a tricky one. I do really like... I like having a lot of offensive pressure with the Walking Wake. Mm, the Flutter Main can put in a lot of work. I'm not exactly 100% certain. I do like Venus over the pressure to Wellspring Ogre Pond, though. I'm trying to figure out what I should lead. I think I like Walking Wake a lot. Plus, Torkoal isn't too bad. I think Walking Wake plus Torkoal is pretty good. My own Flutter Main isn't bad, but I don't think it's necessary. I could bring the Ferrigraph so I'm not super vulnerable to Grassy Glide and Sucker Punch. But I really like Iron Hands to cover like both Real Boom and King Gam instead. And Venus is also pretty good against that, I think. Like, I just don't think like Ferrigraph does much other than block the two priority moves. And I don't think... I could bring like Iron Hands over Ven... Or uh, I could bring... Uh, v Ferrigraph over Venusaur if I want the Trick Room. I just don't feel like I need the Trick Room. I'm just going to try it out and see how well it performs. I like the idea of just being able to put on a lot of pressure with the Sun immediately. Have that speed boost, which is going to be pretty crucial. I do have a little bit of a weakness to switching into Flutter Main, but I might have to Terra. So I might have to Terra, depending on the situation. Ogre Pound Mouse Hold. All right. Eh. Not exactly my best case scenario. Okay. Hmm. Activates the Protosynthesis. I get my speed boost. Okay. Population bomb is scary. But in order for you to population bomb my walking wake, you have to go for A, a follow me with Ogre Pond, and B, a population bomb into the walking wake. So you would have to give up your mouse hold. I think my best play is actually just to go for an eruption, try to KO the mouse hold as quick as possible, and maybe just flamethrower that slot as well. I could Terra as well, my walking wake, but I don't really feel like it's that necessary, at least immediately. So, you know, I'm just going to flamethrower an eruption. They go for the follow me, which is fine because I get a huge flamethrower off into the Wellspring Ogre Pond. So Wellspring Ogre Pond takes a bunch of damage. Population Bomb is going to come out of Walking Wake. And I'm okay with training Walking Wake if I get both knockouts. I went for the Eruption for this purpose. Because I knew that the only way the Mouse was getting attack off was me going... Was that exact play of the Follow Me plus the Population Bomb. And since they didn't target the Torkoal, let's Eruption and uh, bring this to a 2v3 situation immediately. So I'm very happy about this. Assuming this Chaos Mouse but it should. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. The only problem is I did get rid of my best answer to the Gouging Fire, but I mean, I do have Torkoal with Earth Power, which can put on enough pressure. I think I just go Venusaur. 
the gouging fire is going to come out and the flutter main i want to see if flutter mains uh, the last hey it's flutter main mm. should be specs on this team speed booster not too surprising hey okay. i guess the question is do i want to target the gouging fire or do i want to target the flutter main and are they going to lock in a fairy move? Because if they lock in a fairy move, uh, they're not doing that much damage to my lead. I guess the question is how much does Shadow Ball and a Heat Crash do to Torkoal? I feel like Heat Crash shouldn't do much. Shadow Ball would definitely do a lot, though. Mm, I think the best play is probably just a Heat Wave, the Flutter Main. I don't feel like... Actually, no, I don't think Terra's ever to play. I think it's just Heat Wave and Sludge Bomb. I could Terra Fire too, which isn't a bad play, I suppose. But I think I'd get two shot anyway, so you know what? I'm just gonna sludge on the Flutter Main. They do Shadow Ball lock in, which makes a lot of sense to me, okay? Ooh, does a lot to Torkoal, actually. Here comes a Sludge Bomb into Flutter Main. Really good damage. Did you double up? Okay, they went for the Heat Crash into the Venusaur. Perfect. Okay. And we should be able to pick up the knock on the floor main here with the heat wave. Nice, we connect. Okay, that's all I needed. Here we have flutter main. Granted, it's still not an over game. Because they do have uh, <sighs> they do have the option to burn the iron hand, so despite this being like what could be potentially really good, it's still not really yet. Hmm. Because there is the Burning Bulwark. And I think you should always Burning Bulwark here. I don't want to protect and fake out the Torkoal. If they breaking so I just is bad, but I feel like... I don't know, it's a mind game between Burning Bulwark right now. Nice. Okay, I got it right. Cool. So I protect the Torkoal. I target the Torkoal slot so I don't have a contact move affecting the Gouging Fire. I'm able to get a big drain punch off. Now my opponent can only choose between going for a breaking swipe, which wouldn't knock out the Torkoal. I get a huge earth power or I get like a neutral drain punch to start things off. So I will go for an earth power. I will go for the drain punch into the gouging fire. I still don't know if he crash knocks out Torkoal. I know it's sun boosted, but like Torkoal's physical defense is crazy. <laughs> I bet the base power difference will probably be enough to... Ooh, okay. We see a Terra. Hmm. All right. Is this fairy? Okay. So I can't heavy slam this. Wall charge is my best damage outputting move. A Terra. I completely forgot that they had Terra still available. He crash going to come out into the Torkoal slot. Picks up the knock on Torkoal. Yeah, I was worried about that. All right. Drain punch and a gouging fire. Actually doesn't do that bad damage, actually. Every turn, I have to guess on the Burning Bulwark. I'm going to wall charge because I think Break His Swipe's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm getting it right. The problem is, is it enough? So I have no idea if it will be enough. Here comes a wall charge. <sighs> I don't know. Instincts, instincts, instincts. Um, Protosynthesis is not going to matter because of speed. <laughs> I like how I have to guess every turn of whether I'm going to go for this. Granted, I think I, if I teared the Venusaur, it was probably better. Yeah, I probably should have teared the Venusaur. Because I ended up not using this Terra. I thought I'd be able to get more damage in the Gouty Fire potentially, but the Shadow Ball did a bit more to the Torkoal into the Heat Crash. Actually, pick up the Knockout with Sun. Uh, fake out or Wild Charge? I'm going to fake out. Nice. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting the calls right, but I still have to win the game. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, you go for the wall charge. It's probably breaking swipe again. Because I think he crashed just like no damage to Iron Hands. Alright, how much damage are we doing with wall charge? Uh, I think it's a guessing. I, I do think it's a guessing game. I went aggressive the last time. 
I'm gonna risk it. Ah, I had to get it wrong eventually. All right, I I had to get everything right. Uh, the game's still winnable if I crit, I think, into the I into the gouting fire because I think I get stalled out by breaking swipe into crit. I think this game plan was just a lot worse. I did get rid of the flare main, but I took more damage than I expected. I think I had to tear rid of Venusaur there and go for the uh, what's it called? I had to go for the Terra Fire Sludge Bomb into the into the Flutter Main plus the thing, and I think I would have been in a much better spot. I think I lose now. Yeah, because I'm not doing any damage to Gouging Fire. I don't even think it's in crit. It might be in crit range, but I just don't think I'm going to... Because they burning Bulwark, stall out, turn to burn, and then I'm going to get crit, so... Played a little bit bad against the Gouging Fire. I also should have probably remembered that they had Terra, and I could have went for the Wall Charge, so... Just like two probably mistakes here. Not using my Terra as well as I should have. I think that the Terra on Venusaur was definitely like a bigger misplay in sight. I think Drain Punch was fine. But yeah, I guess like also like I had to get the calls right with the with the uh, Burning Bow. Like, okay, Iron Hands, if you crit here, we might have a chance. We might have a chance. <laughs> a Wild Charge? Ah, uh, not a crit, unfortunately, so... But yeah, definitely on, that was definitely on me. Definitely had a room of opportunity for the window. Probably like three times, but a few micro mistakes. I think the Venusaur was a major blunder and the Iron Hands attacks weren't as bad. But yeah, it was just basically calls there. All right, let's go over the games. And game one was able to nicely position in this game, getting very heavy damage while my opponent wasn't able to set up much momentum. Even with the Trick Room up, so I was able to get good damage to clean the weakened Pokemon once the final Trick Room expired. In Game 2, the Turn 1 couldn't have worked out any better, as my opponent lost their Fluttermane and Terra immediately, while I kept denying them any chances to swing the game around with multiple attacks. In Game 3, I had several mistakes that I pointed out already, but the main one was thinking I needed to save my Terra where Venusaur should have Terra'd, Otherwise, it was burning Bulwark mind games and not going for a wall charge earlier when they went for the Terra Fairy with the Gouging Fire. Venusaur is a really fun Pokemon. It is a shame that it can't outspeed a Speed Booster Fluttermane mainly because of the speed stats and how ridiculous Fluttermane speed stat is, but still really solid. I wouldn't be surprised to see more of Venusaur when we do come down to the restricted format, but it's also really strong into Ogre Ponds with Poison being a pretty decent offensive coverage option now. And Weather Ball is really strong. If you would like to check out the details of the team and the creator, it will be down below in the description. And hopefully the rental code is still available, which is on the screen now. But otherwise, you can subscribe to the channel for more VGC content as always.